Hi, everyone. I have my panelists here, and we just let you guys the attendees join. So I'm just going to give it a minute or two for everyone to join online. And then we can start this really interesting topic that we have for, for all of you, but for me as well, because I really, really, uh, if you want to say it in our, you know, uh, language, I really suck at saving. So it would be beneficial for me to learn some strategies around that. Cool, guys. So we're just going to give it a minute or two for our attendees to join, and then we can start. And I was planning to start actually with you, Igor. Uh, I will introduce you, Nicola, as well, my dear colleague, of course. But uh, then, Igor, I would like you to tell us more about your platform, because I think it's really, really important, because I guess we can't talk about savings if we don't talk about how people are you know, finding job, what they do about it, and so on. And I think your platform is really interesting in, in those terms. But I want everyone to hear that story. So in a minute or two, we can we can start. Just just to make it clear before uh, everyone joins, like how do I pronounce it correctly? Trajim uh, dot uh, or HR? Trajim Hair, if you Trajim are. Hair. Yeah. Good. Or just Trajim whatever it yeah. means search uh on english search yes so i have people joining and then we can start and i know we're recording so for those who registered thanks um i know friday it's a tricky time you know to have it on your schedule to join a live a live session but we'll be sending you the recording so you won't you know, miss this this session. Cool. Well, I think we can start anyway. Everyone is gonna get the, the recording on on this one. So hi again, everybody. Nice to have you here uh, live with us on this second webinar since we started talking about finances or evangelize finances the way we wanna we wanna say at native teams. Today I have Igor from uh, Trajim Haer and Nicola from Native Teams, my colleague, to talk about savings and long-term but also short-term strategies when it comes to freelancers and how they manage their finances, how they invest and how they save. But um, as I mentioned in the beginning, I would like Igor to tell us more about your platform how it started, what do you do, what is interesting, what are the solutions, who is using it. We want to hear everything and then we're going to move on to the, to the savings. So the stage is yours. Okay, um, I'm Igor <laughs> and currently I'm working with a couple of my colleagues uh, on new freelancing platform for our region, Balkan region. Uh, the name is Trajim Khair. On English it means I'm, uh, I'm searching. And we are trying to create the best solution for all freelancers here uh, on, a, on our region because we are trying to combine them with the same language and to provide them the best from uh, world freelancing platforms. Uh, we know about Fiverr and we know about Upwork where you can um, provide your service and where you can apply on someone's projects. We are trying to combine those two main features into one uh, unique platform here so our freelancers don't have to search uh, clients all around the world if they don't want to because we think it's easier to work with our people on your native language uh, easier to came up with good better solution better uh, final product and everything so Currently, there are five of us, uh, and we are still uh, trying to. We are still building and uh, in the progress of uh, building better platform. We are, of course, not done with that. So, I think, in short words, that's something general about Trajan Hire. Cool, sounds good. And do you have already people using it? Like we Kennedy. have, yeah. we have uh, each day more and more freelancers, more and more services, uh, a couple of um, main categories like digital marketing, uh, writing and uh, 
programming uh, with the subcat subcategories where you can provide your services. And uh, it's uh, funny for us because even with the low marketing and while our uh, not so much and uh, going through a marketing paid marketing we are still uh gaining more uh many freelancers many custom uh, basic users that are using our platforms so we think uh we are building a good product for them yes i think you do since you have that organic um leads like that so guys i'm gonna share actually um the website here so you can you can all have a look and as i understood it's all for the balkan region so not just croatia but for the, yeah. the balkan we have, wider. we have a lot of users from serbia from bosnia and herzegovina and everybody are welcome but it's mainly for our region Cool. Well, I hope in a year it, it will become international. <laughs> I we really will, hope we will will, you will go there. Yeah. Thank you very much, Igor. I think this was very, very useful. Um, Nicola, do you want to introduce yourself quickly? Like, it would be nice to, to hear um, about you, where are you from, your journey with Native Teams shortly, and then we'll move on to savings. Sure. So my name is Nicola. I work with Native Teams and for Native Teams, I work as a product manager here. And uh, I started as a product manager basically last year, close to the ending of last year, and uh, we're still going uh, with the company, basically. Um, I do like... Um, what we focus on and what we tend to progress when it comes to the freelance market with what we do here. Uh, we do focus on freelancers just like Igor does here. We do focus on freelancers, not just to welcome, but we're already worldwide. We're hoping that Igor will be there as well. And uh, we do like to collab with, as we do now with other companies and see what we can help in the sphere of freelancing and uh, mostly on the finances stuff on well the main thing we're focused on is money the only thing we're doing freelancing is for the money the connections always help but the money is the main goal here so that's what we're focusing on at least this time around for the webinar and how yeah. what to do with that finance once you get it yeah let's talk about it guys because i the only thing that i do is invest in clothes which i know it's not the <laughs> the most like smart thing to say here but it's really what I do so I want to learn from both of you what I can do and Nicole is going to tell us a little bit more on what we have done for for people like me inside of the platform and Igor we will hear from your experience uh, with freelancers as well so basically guys what we're going to discuss through um, eight questions that I have here and at some point if you think that I'm reading some of them I am really because um, I'm not able to, to remember all of them and I want us to, to focus on all of them because they're really interesting. So really, we're going to discuss about, you know, the freelance uh, world. So we're going to put the freelancer um, as, a, as a starting point and as our user persona and discuss the, I wouldn't say the challenges, but the opportunities that they have, how to manage uh, their finances, which is the goal of all of the webinars that we're going to do um, for this topic. But for today, really about how to save, how to invest, and how to make a short and long-term strategy in uh, you know, managing those finances. Because we know, and as Nicola said, and I think Igor, that's why you've made the platform, because the, the world is moving into that freelance and remote work, so everyone is online. And to be blunt and honest, freelancers and remote workers make you know good uh good money nowadays but what happens do they have strategies what happens if they don't and so on we're gonna talk about now during um this session and the questions that i'm gonna ask to my panelists so igor i would like to start with you uh, the first question would be to discuss the unique financial challenges faced by freelancers and how they can proactively address them. Like whatever you think is a financial challenge for, for freelancers and how to address them in your opinion. Yeah. Um, first of all, I need to say that I was never a freelancer. I was always working somewhere, but mm -hmm. for this webinar, I talked with some of them. Uh, so I'm talking on behalf of them 
through their experience. And as I find out, uh, the main problem, I think we all know that, are taxes and irregular income. For example, there are, uh, there are many freelancers that have fluctuations in income because mm. uh, uh, projects may come and go and th this can be hard. Uh, sometimes you have high in-house income, you have, sometimes you have low income months. And I think it's important to set always uh, set aside a small side, uh, portion for some kind of emergency uh, fund. And of course, many freelancers, even I, uh, don't know how to handle taxes, uh, how to pay them, uh, when. And I think it's important to to consult with someone, accounted on professional tax professional who can help you to understand uh, everything about taxes, tax obligations, and to implement some kind of system that will um, set aside money for uh, those taxes uh, throughout the year. And one thing that I was uh, surprised by, uh, when I was talking about uh, uh, challenges are some kind of unpredictable expenses. For mm -hmm. example, for example, I never told about it, but they need to pay for equip equipment, uh, softwares if they are using something with uh, with license. Of course, they need to pay for marketing, and sometimes they even have uh, expenses while trying to uh, with client ac acquisitions. And I think also mm, the last but not the least important thing is uh, sometimes cl clients don't pay on time mm -hmm. and it can be very frustrated uh, because some sometimes uh, payments can be delayed. Uh, it's important somehow to negotiate uh, to pay in adv advance at least a small portion of I don't know, agreed work or something like that. Uh, I think those, how many, four, uh, four things are kind of the most important to uh, mention while we are talking about those unique challenges. Challenges, yeah. To be honest, I've never thought about, you know, buying all of that software and what they need that actually falls on them. You're you're right. Like when you have an employer, I guess it falls on the employer to uh, to give you everything that you need. But when you are a freelancer, actually you are accountable for them as well. So that that's that's a great point to to make here. Thanks, thanks, Igor. And guys, from uh, from the participants, if you want to add something, if you have your own experience, what are your challenges? Feel free to drop them in. Um, in the in the chat um would like also to mention yep. while you were talking about uh, as they have to pay everything for uh, by themselves and i'm working for a company that that is paying everything we can say that also one of the challenges is uh, lack of benefits like mm -hmm. all health insurance i don't know paid time off and things like that so it can also be uh, considered as a challenge yeah yeah completely agree thank you really for speaking with freelancers to to give us the the real challenges that that they have and shared with you um my second question would be to nicola but Igor, you can uh you feel free to to jump in and add anything that you have and that would be what would be the essential components of of a freelance saving plan and how do they tailor it let's say to their specific needs because we all have like different needs and different plans with it like what would you say are the essentials there sure i think it depends on a lot of things uh but there's a big incentive on saving when you're a freelancer just as Igor mentioned like you don't have a fixed income it varies mm -hmm. up and down so always need to have some kind of a backup plan where you need to at least store some kind of cash or at least invest it. Investment, investing in whatever you want to is always viable, but you need to you need to remember that 
there are differences between investments. There are short-term investments and long-term investments. Of course, when you're a freelancer, the short-term ones work a little bit better with you because you're not sure whether or not tomorrow you're going to have a job, if Fiverr is going to go down, if whatever app online that you're using to collect money is going to go down. There's There was an example where like Pioneer a year ago went um, insolvent uh, when it came to their specific cars that they were using. So anything can happen. So the main thing is keep things diversified, but you still need to save. Now, there's a few ways you can save as a freelancer. And it depends, again, on the person you are, um, if you're frugal or if you're not. If you're frugal, you tend to not have any problems when it comes to saving. Mm -hmm. you, you save on everything, on, on groceries, on whatever you want to buy for clothes, for traveling. And that's fine for you. you it, it's it's more, It might be supernatural for you to like save money and uh, keep it on the side. But if you're not frugal, then you really need a plan uh, to kind of handle your money. <laughs> and then we have Alex there as an example. Um, thankfully, I'm more on the frugal side, but um, I, I wouldn't say it's a bonus. I think it's it's better if you're not that frugal because you have more ideas and you tend to think of more ideas on how to at least invest or save your money. Now, as a freelancer, um, um, the best way you can tailor when it comes to saving your money, as I mentioned, is short term. But I'm not saying that short term would be like you've invested today and you get triple your money in, in five days. We're not playing the casino casino here. We're not playing slots. We're not playing blackjack. We need to have some kind of a viable way of getting things back. The stock market is one of them. But again, not all of us have access to stock markets to, to, to our countries or at least go in the U.S. invested there. So some things may be limited, but the surest ways is usually uh, on, on making it via deposits. Uh, usually how it goes, you go, into, you go into your local bank, you deposit the, the, the amount of money you want, and basically you get a small interest uh, at the end of the year, or you make it on two or three or five or six years, whatever the case may be, uh, the essential thing you need to do if you're not a frugal person is basically to whatever money you get, you select a portion of it to spend and select a portion of it to save. So the best savings plan is whatever money you get, make sure you put something aside. Because as a freelancer, as Igor said, you're not going to have benefits. So you need to think about where your money is going to go. Because that's the main portion of uh, your focus after you earn your money. Your first, first um, kind of priority is getting that money. And then, Igor, as Igor mentioned, you got to walk around the taxes, pay them up. Because you don't want the authorities um, coming after you. And once you have that handled, then it's time to think about like uh, what you need to do with it and how to save it. That's that that that's the way I think you should go about it. That's, yeah, that's really well said, but it's easier said than done, I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, but let's go step by step now and discuss all of these points that you which you have made. Third question was actually you both mentioned it that actually the uh, the income that a freelancer has it's you know varies from month to month as such depending on their clients and on the gigs that they get and so on. What would you both say? Let's say what are some strategies that we can make to make sure that no matter how much it varies, we'll still have some safety net for ourselves. Like any example like that, if you can share. Hmm. Um, I think I'll I'll take this first. I think it really depends on how much money you make as a freelancer. Uh, if you're making like an um, outrageous amount of money compared to your living standards where you're at, then uh, saving up to even like five to 10% of your money is going to be enough. But depending on how much you make, if you make just enough for the month, um, then saving might not even be an option. So in, in that point, it's better for you to focus on making more money instead of how do I save it or invest it. Mm -hmm. So at least you need to first get that running start with the income. And once you have it, have enough of it, then you can really think about investing it because uh, it does fluctuate. It does depend on a lot of things, but mostly on yourself, like what you can offer, who can, who can pay you, how much they can pay you and what you can learn more to get like new jobs, new gigs, um, new ways to connect with people when it comes to um, different offers, et cetera. So it really uh, varies on the um, amount of income you can get 
uh, on, a, on a consistent basis. Right, makes sense. And Igor, you go, and then I have an interesting question about this one. Yeah, totally agree with Nicola. Uh, I think at the beginning, as Nicola said, if you have just enough money to cover everything for living, so you don't have anything for saving, uh, it's important to create, of course, a realistic budget, but also somehow to uh, try to invest in yourself. Uh, maybe sound sounds like cliche, but it helped me a lot. Uh, continuous learning and upskilling is very important at the beginning. With that, you will be uh, more uh, the better expert in uh, your domain and you will be able to set uh, even better rates for the clients. So you will somehow uh, earn more. And also the most important thing at the beginning is to create networking uh, as uh, as much as better as as better as you can because while you are building relationships with um, clients and people similar to you to your domain you will also help yourself to maintain a steady flow of work and uh, probably increase your chance of securing a new project and new income that will um, spread and spread uh, later and later. <laughs> yeah, actually, you answered my question. I was going to ask you, like, do you think that we can see an investment, something if I invest on an amount of my money in my upskilling, in learning something or, you know, getting a, a course to get my skills better and so on so I can get more clients? But you answered my question. So I think that's also a, a strategy for for investing no can you can you agree with me have you done it I, I have done it for sure but actually it ties really well on how Nicola explained it when you were sure or when you were earning enough money so you can you know you know that you will be stable I don't know to pay your rent or whatever you need to pay and then invest in yourself as well it's easier to make that that goal and that strategy right so the next question is actually con connected to that one. How can we strike a balance between saving and spending on on what we what we need to save or spend? Let's say if spending here is really, um, I don't know, any needs that I have as a freelancer, I don't know, I need to buy equipment or I need to um, invest in myself. How do we strike that balance? Help me out. Yeah, I think I can handle this one. Again, um, it's it's a bridge on what you need and what you have. Um, again, it, it it does come down to the amount the amount of funds you do get to earn, let's say within a month, but you still need that that, that balance. So let's assume you have enough money for yourself and enough money to to save. Now, where do you put the balance in? You put the balance in where you want to. Now, that might not be the the best option to go around because you do want to eat uh, the the next month over and maybe in a year from now, in two years, and maybe you do want to buy a house or a car or whatever uh, a few years going down. So the balance that you set is, is the one you set for yourself. Again, if you're a frugal person, it would be rather easy because you get to choose how much money you can save. But there always needs to be specifics. Now, you can go on the internet and some people will say, hey, you, you'll need to save like 20% of, of your monthly income, 30% of your monthly income, 50% of your monthly income. It all really depends on how much you need to save or you need to spend. Obviously, whatever you're working on, if you're working with a computer and you're a freelancer and you work online, if your computer breaks, your savings plan go, goes out the window. You need a new computer to, in, in order to get some new funds in. So there are simple essentials that your money does need to go in. Of course, there's the, the work option when it comes to like your computer, your internet, your, your mobile phone, your data on your phone. Like those are essentials. Of course, the food that you eat and you need a place to sleep. Those are the essentials that you need to put in. And, and as human beings, after you end work, you do need to at least spend some time somewhere even if it's with yourself you need you need to have a quality time to spend with yourself so maybe someone wants to travel once a week once a month or whenever but the balance always needs to strike where you do have enough funds to, so that you're covered not not just so when you stop working i think the best uh, balance would be if you're not necessarily looking forward to uh, save for a house or a car let's say a good budget plan would be to have at least 
three to six months worth of your monthly income backed up just if you have no work. You don't sometimes need to think about um, what if I don't have work the next week, but you need to think about, hey, I might break my arms tomorrow and they need to heal for two months so I can't use, so I can won't be able to use my computer. So that's those are the other aspects when it comes to health. Um, so keep a good budget like three to three to six months, I, I would say on the back burner. But anything after that, I think you can you can easily invest it. Even if you again, if you're not a frugal person, I would suggest you invest it as soon as you get it because there are multiple options online and we do as well where as soon as you get the money you can invest it so that you don't need to think about it hey i have 300 dollars i have 300 euros maybe i can buy this maybe i can buy that in this pay in, in this case you'll see oh i already invested i can't really touch that money i'll have to wait three months six months or nine months or how much how, how how much time i've set to invest that money to bring it back so the balance is to know yourself if you know you can save it that's perfect if you know you can't then it's time to at least get a little bit of money to to have if you're not working for like three to three to four months so you, so you can support yourself everything after that you can straight up invest it so you don't really necessarily need to touch it if you're not sure of yourself i think that's the best balance there yeah yeah well, well said. yeah I well said <laughs> We can see you've been thinking about this. You've been you've been saving Nicola for sure. So my, my 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 actually my family name has a bad rep because we're kind of like the the people that most run towards the money portion of it. I think that, that's why, and I got the genes for it, which might be a bad thing, but we'll see in a few years. <laughs> No, I think it's a good it's a good thing, especially you know when you talk about it. Like, looks like you've done your your homework with this one, which is really great uh, for all of us here. So thanks for that. And Igor, my next question would be addressed to you, and then we'll get to the part where you guys talk with us about where we invest, because I really wanna you know start doing that after with this webinar myself, after I, you know, meet myself and how frugal or not I am. So Igor, what are the recommended strategies for freelancers to manage unplanned expenses while still maintaining their, their savings plan? Let's say we've made a savings plan, but something un unplanned is happening. Any thoughts on some strategies that we can have here to, to add? Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's hard to give some unique strategy for yeah. everything of course but i think at least what i heard the most important thing is uh to break every every goal into milestones to monitor your progress um of course make adjustments if needed because um you need to stay flexible and adapt to adapt to evolving circumstances and at the end, it's important to celebrate those milestones. Mm -hmm. And when yeah. when I'm asked why, just to stay motivated. Uh, of course, it's important to build and maintain emergency fund while you are driving through those milestones, fighting everything. And at the end, you need to know how to prioritize uh, expenses. It's important to sometimes to temporarily postpone or reduce uh, uh, some spendings and to allocate funds towards uh, some different urgent, uh, urgent needs. And we can say at the end, uh, all strategies are bad if you don't revisit, revisit your budget from time to time. Uh, it's important to review uh, budget so everything can go smoothly while you are working. So there are no unaccepted, uh, um, uh, something, uh, nothing bad will happen if you have budget for everything and if you re review, revisit your budget from time to time. I think that's not uh, a strategy how to become a millionaire, but a strategy how to uh be stable uh financially stable while working and trying to find new projects i'm curious about this Igor, because um saving is important always but i'm wondering what are your thoughts on saving when it comes to like uh, multiple currencies or do you think it's, it's okay to go with one 
Uh, I think uh, it depends based on person. A uh, couple of months ago in Croatia, we had Kuna and I think everybody were saving in euros. Now we have euro uh, in Croatia and still everybody are saving in euros. Uh, I, I think it depends on person. Personally, I am always saving in gold because <laughs> you do interesting yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see a lot of advertisements out there like selling gold and uh, i've never given it given it a thought actually but i i think i, I see what you mean because um for the last 20 30 40 years gold gold has been on the up um but i oh now this is a new for me i never actually met a person who actually does practice saving using gold is yeah, that maybe. kind of a, a hard thing to 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 follow up or, or keep I mean where do you keep okay that that might not be a great <laughs> question like, where do you keep your gold yeah. but what uh, would be the, the safe way to go about it I mean uh it depends do you want a gold in physical format or you can sell it just like stocks uh, um well what what kind of uh gold do you keep uh I'm I I have physical gold of course First. but I also started with um uh, those uh gold and silver stocks i don't know mm. so, you, so you do for that so you do both yep and i also tried with crypto but mm. somehow i have bad experience with that uh everything is so um i don't know too much fluctuations nothing yeah. is 100 uh, percent uh, you can't be 100 percent sure with anything even the bitcoin there are a lot of ups and downs uh, through the even one month. And I think for saving, at least for me, the best thing are cash and gold. If you ask me why, I can't exactly ask, answer you why. Uh, it's what they told me while I was young <laughs> until now. Uh, I think everything... Uh, all other things that you can uh, see on internet through advertisement, for example, uh, I don't know, index stocks, everything mm. about. So I think you need a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge for that. You can't be just tabula rasa and start investing in crypto. You will lose everything. Yeah. yeah. So I think the easiest, easiest solution is, at least for me, invest in gold through the history gold never loses the value let's mm. like that so i think maybe that's the easiest way yeah but i think you mentioned it as you hold like gold stocks and gold as, as a physical form i think the main point to get from that is diversification yeah. because you do you have diversified basically your your savings so whatever goes down the other portions of it can at least stay so yeah. you don't lose on everything and if you gain you gain on something at least yeah. yeah, I think that's a that's a fair point. Just to make sure I'm not Switzerland, I'm not millionaire. I don't have that much gold. <laughs> I have just enough for myself. We don't know. We don't know. We haven't <laughs> seen it. How many stalkers are you gonna have after this webinar? <laughs> One over here. One over here. <laughs> One over here is also. <laughs> But well, that's a that that's a really good point. Like I think I can follow up on this when it comes to like investments for freelancers because freelancers have freelancers have more options for investments than anyone else I would think not just because they get to work for any client uh, anywhere they get to invest and they get investment options anywhere on the internet uh, if you're working for a small company or a big company even where where you live you might be focused on hey what's going on around me I can invest this this and that but if you're a freelancer you can see all these options I saw an advertisement on gold. I haven't tried it. Igor has, and it's working out for him quite well. So if I wasn't a freelancer, if I wasn't a freelancer, if I didn't met Igor, I wouldn't have met a person for the first time that actually does spend their money on saving via gold. So the more friends you have, as you can see, there's more and more ways for you to learn on how to how to save and grow savings. Well, that, that's the main focus here is grow savings. 
Um, and the, the key point that we took from there was diversification. So make sure you diversify your income. And most importantly, I think, is not just diversify because when, when you buy gold, I think, as Igor might mention it now, it's more of a long run kind of thing. You don't expect Igor, I think, to buy gold and just sell it a week from now and yeah. take a profit for it. For as a freelancer, it's a little bit different. You do want to strike a balance. So you, you would want to invest, I guess, in gold, but that would be a long-term investment. But you do need a short-term investments as well. Um, let's say if you're making, well, we'll net, we don't need to specifically give out numbers, but um, if you're, let's say out of 100% of your income, you're spending maybe 40% on your necessities. I would think 10 to 15% would be good for the long-term investments, as Igor mentioned. The other 30 would be okay for the short ones. Um, the, lar the larger portions for the short for the for the short-term investments is slightly better because you don't know what you what you need a month from now or two months from now. So you do need that a uh, little larger pie of cash handy for you. And available. Of course, as the months go by, the long-term investments build and build, while the short-term ones build slowly, but they're always there for you. So uh, the balance isn't just how much money you put in, but how much money you put in in short or long-term investments. I think that's uh, that, that's a key point to, to look into there as well. And um, with that, I think uh, we do, in Native Teams itself, we do have a way to um, help freelancers kind of invest their money. And um, it's not just uh, how to invest, but actually invest from inside the platform. Um, the other portion that we didn't mention, I think, was different currencies, because every country has a different currency. And I think we we found the solution for that for native teams. Basically, since you do have a, a vault, um, well, not necessarily a vault, a wallet where you can keep your multiple currencies, you can invest um uh, via all of your currencies so we don't necessarily have a restriction on hey you only have this currency you can invest with it so we do have that option to that allows you to invest via native teams now um i think maybe i can demonstrate it alex yeah you go uh, for it that was my my last question uh for you so we can demonstrate that but i would just like to say thank you Igor, for sharing this golden story with us i'm off to make some gold after after this one but really super refreshing so thanks very much for that and nicola you go show us now on the other side how we can you know in just not just do it in, in gold if we want to but do something uh as you say to keep that diversity so let's say if pirates come and steal my gold what i'm gonna do then <laughs> So show us where else we can invest our money. We will do that as soon as our dear host will allow me to share my screen. So I think that'll be sorted really shortly. Yeah. Uh, and I think the way we did it is slightly, well, you, you, you're you going to see it for yourself, but it's slightly, it's slightly better than what you could expect from uh, your local country. So I think we got it. I think we have a raised hand here. Uh, the King Delhi, maybe he has a question, but I think we have, you can put your question in the Q&A, we can see exactly. it, and then we can just answer it straight up. Um, I still don't have sharing, right? So let me check. I think you should, I see it. Um, share screen. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Then let me share my screen. And please tell me when you can see it. Seeing it. Let me move this out of the way. So it's not a problem. Okay, so I'm logged into my native Teams account. And um, I think what we wanted to achieve here with when it comes to helping freelancers invest is uh, we provide you kind of the first door to investment. What does that mean? The first door to investment uh, as, as any person anywhere is your parents telling you, hey, here's your money invested in a bank. Just put it there and uh, after some one, two, five, maybe 10 years, it'll grow. So that's the first concept we've, we've taken here and in, incorporated into our platform for native teams here. And why, we, why did we choose that? Mainly because it's the um, safest option, I would say, for our users to get into, to get into that first 
Uh, Igor mentioned you, you you can go to stock options, you can buy gold. I would say that's a little bit more advanced. I wouldn't, um, if I was starting off, I wouldn't start with that. I mean, you you still need to learn how things work. So going with going it with a bank just to try out like, hey, what would happen? What what does what do interest uh, interest percentage mean? How do I get them? When do I get them? When can I uh, pull out my money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Those are the basic things you need to look at. So that's why we we incorporated that kind of a feature for for our native teams. So we do have the name. Uh, of the feature for native teams for that it's called the native vault and it's it basically functions as a as a bank now we're not the bank we work with banks and we will work with your money and the bank so those we connect basically you and the bank uh, what we offer is the following so if i were to click on add funds we'll see what we're working with here so we have first of all multiple uh currencies that you can use to to invest but don't think of it, hey, it's only euros, it's only US dollars here. You can convert any currency into any other currency within your wallet for native teams. So you don't have any kind of restrictions for that. The only restrictions that we do um, put you on is the minimums. So the minimum you can invest in our case is $100 or 100 euros. So whatever you choose, dollars or euros, the minimum is going to be 100. There's no maximum uh, because why would any bank? say, oh, that's too much money for me. They're always going to want more money. So we ha don't have a limit for the maximum. Now, we also give you the option to select uh, to which bank your money would go. Now, this doesn't change anything when it comes to um, the amount you would get with one bank or the other. It's going to be the same because we set uh, the um, uh, interest, per interest percentage for the amount. Uh, but what, what does happen with uh, separate banks is you can see that uh, each bank has a separate uh, um, amount that they do cover if they go, I don't know, bankrupt or insolvent. For instance, uh, uh, Oberbank here says that your accounts are insured up to 100,000 euros. If you uh, switch to OTP bank, it's going to be the same, but different banks have different amounts for, uh, oh, I'm not going to pronounce the German names bank. I'm going to butcher it. So it's 25,500 uh, for that one. But as you can see, like... Um, Depending on how much you invest, and I wouldn't think it would go for huge numbers here, I will always say test it out, throw in like 100, uh, maybe even like a 500 uh, euros amount, just to see how it would work, when you get paid, how do you get paid, and basically we have it structured here. So we have three ways on how you can save your money. Um, we have 30, 60, and 90 days. Now, why did we choose this amount specifically? If you go to a local bank, it'll, they'll say like, hey, you can invest your money here. You can get a fixed percentage, but it's going to be a minimum a year. I don't think there's a bank that will allow you to kind of uh, deposit and make interest uh, and make interest payments to you if it's less than a year. And you're going to get a better percentage, of course, as the higher you go, like a year or two or three. But you're a freelancer. And this is might be a, a big chunk of your money. So you don't want to invest it and for it to stay in the back in the bank that long. So we do have that option that you can invest it for 30, 60 or 90 days. Three months is like nothing month to three months is like no time at all but it's again no time at all for any kind of issues or problems to to come up with uh, for you to come up with like like we mentioned before you might need a new laptop and then what you're not going to wait for two years for the bank to kind of unfreeze your money uh, yeah. so that's the, the the best option here now the second thing to look at is the percentage wise that we offer Again, this is not linked to a specific bank. Wh whichever bank you choose only affects the uh, the amount you're insured up to. Um, the percentages that we provide are fixed. And if we intend or would change these numbers or percentages, would it form, of course, our clients beforehand a month or two or uh, ahead of uh, ahead of time? And of course, if you're already on a specific um, savings plan for 30, 60, and 90 days, of course, that percentage uh, fixed amount, you already saved it, so you're going to get paid for that. Uh, regardless, uh, uh, just try and compare. So let me show you why. Uh, for 90 days, we do offer 2% interest rate on your, on, your, on your funds. Now, if you go to your local banks, it's going to be, of course, a minimum a year, but that year amount is 
probably, well, it's, it tends to go with inflation right, right now, it would be between one and 6%, maybe even, maybe six and a half, but that's even pushing it. If you look at the numbers here, 90 days, what's that? That's like, that's like three months. What we have in a year, that's like 12, which is times four. So you can recycle this amount like four times as you would with, with, within a bank and you would get 8% basically interest on your funds. And it's not 8%. It's slightly more because the first 90 days you get 2% and then you can reinvest the 2%. And then three months down the line, again, you can reinvest that 2%. So it's, it would be, uh, I didn't do the, the specific math, but it would go come to like 8.1, 8.2%, something like that. But uh, that's the best way you can do and, and, and just compare, just open up your local banks, basically that you have sites and see what they offer. One year's deposit, this is how much percentage they offer. And just compare it to native teams, because I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to offer more. And uh, the upside is, of course, it's going to be shorter. You don't have to wait for a year. You can just invest in 90 days and keep the amount. So let's just go, go through the process here. So the saved amount that I want to use is 500. The reward percentage is 2%. And the reward for it is um, 10 uh, 10 euros here after those 90 days. And what happens is if I just click add funds, uh, the system will deduct the amount from my Euro wallet and it's going to immediately go to the bank that I selected. Now, uh, the bank might take a day or two to accept the funds and go through the process, but that doesn't matter. As long as you've added the funds here, we'll of course work on things on the back end and make sure that the, the bank gets your deposit. And at the end of these 90 days, as I've just deposited uh, my amount, um, I can see, I think this is a previous deposit. No, wait, no, I think it is. Made a fault. No, I think this is this might be a date fourth fourth. No, this is my previous one. So I think we can. I think it's uh, did I do the dollar one? Oh, I did the euros one. I did the euros one. That's why. Ah, here it is. So it's it, it currently shows as locked, and of course it shows as locked because I've set it to ninety days. So as long as lo when it's when it's unlocked, I can just transfer the money to back to my wallet, and I will have that added ten euros back to use. And again, as I mentioned, again, you can redo this, redo this, redo this. And it's not so that you just wait now ninety days and uh, and uh, use it again. You can use it right now again. So there's it's not just you, you can't just have one active deposit, you can have multiple. I mean I, I'm saying this uh, again because I'm a frugal person, I won't have a problem with this. But if you have money coming in and if if you really want to make sure you don't spend it, each each time you get uh, money coming in, just add a portion to a portion of that to 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 the vault so that you know I'm not gonna touch this money for, for like 30 days. And after 30 days, you get it back. Um, and again, you get a new client two weeks in, you get a large sum of cash, let's say, and you want to make sure you don't spend a portion of it. Again, you can just go to the vault and add funds, add funds, add funds. At the end of uh, each uh, cycle uh, that you've chosen, like after 30, 60 or 90 days, you could you do get the funds back and then you, you can do whatever you want with them. Then you can go on your business trip, then you can go on your holiday, then you can spend on clothes. On vacation, on um, on on technology, I do like my gadgets, so I, I tend to spend more money on that. But the thing is, you do get the option with via native teams to get you started on investing on investment, and uh, this is just your first step forward. And I and I mention again, look at your local banks, look at what they're offering when it comes to like deposits and what the interest rates they they offer, and just compare. And if you do have money in the bank, say, hey, I get more money here. Why would I want my money to be in the bank? It all depends on yourself. How much money you want to come back, claw back, or just get back by interest? Just do the math and you'll see whatever works best for you, you can do that. In, in our case, at least for where I'm from, the, the current interest rates are the best they've ever been. And it's 3.5 a year. So after like half a year, I can make more native teams than a year here. 
An additional fact is this offer for like three, four, three point five percent a year is only up until the thirty first of the month, and after that it goes down to like one percent, maybe half a percent, which is horrendous. And you're on the whims of the bank. So again, look at your options, see what works best for you, and do with that. We're just saying that we as native teams have a way for you to start investing and investing in yourself in your future and at a better percentage than what you would that what you could get at your local bank. So yeah. That was great, Nicola. Thank you very much. I think we have already questions. So great. guys, if you have a correct question, just put them in the QA section and we can answer them. So uh, Ariel is asking, it can be automated. Like I would like to put in the world 10% of income of the month. Um, we did thought uh, about this of including automation, but it's really risky including automation when it comes to funds. Um, let me tell you why. Whenever I wanna invest, I wanna document, or at least I know that my money goes in and it stays in. I click the button to add the money. If I set it to automate it, and then the next month comes by and is the 29th, I've set it maybe to be automated to put it on the 30th. And I think, oh wait, I need this money for this. I can invest it and my goal already go through. And you, it's stuck for 90 days. Now, money is always touchy. It's not like a subscription where um, you could put in like 30, maybe $50 a month and then it's okay. I didn't wanna pay for this subscription this month. It's a touchy thing because the minimum amount, amount is 100. So we might include automation, but at the start, I think we want to keep it as safe as possible. We don't want to have people come to us, hey, I set it to, to be automated, but it went through like the past four or five months it put in money, but I really need that money. I didn't intend for it to, again, it's just back and forth, back and forth. The best way is you click the button, you wanted this amount to go for 90 days, and that's perfect. Um, um, automation would help, but it's it's such a simple process. You just add the amount, you just choose the bank, 90 days, add funds, and that's it. It's like, I don't know, five seconds or less. So it's super simple and we want to avoid mistake, user mistakes specifically, because money is always a touchy subject. Um, and if anyone has any more questions about this, I'll be more than happy to answer. Uh, I think there's one more. Thoughts about try recurring revenue income with your customers? Um, I think that works for income, but again, as a freelancer, you can freelancer can do whatever you want to. Um, it will fluctuate with a recurring revenue income, uh, even if you have it or you don't have it. You can always lose and gain subscribers uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, let me see, like trying to go to subscription plan. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I would I would think it works the same. Um, so recurring revenue is scalable, which is better. It's always better to have recurring, but if you do have recurring, whatever you do, you do have to keep doing it. It's not like a one-time job where you get paid. If it's recurring, you need to do it again, next month again, next month again. So it really is, it's up to you how to how you want to uh, structure your business to to cover revenue. I will I would like to say also um, sub subscriptions are a good model. I think uh, subscribers often feel like they are getting a better deal. But as Nicola said, there is that um, bad side. You need to go keep uh, providing good value, your product, uh, products to your subscribers from month to month. And uh, it will be something uh, like stable cash flow. But uh, I think also it can be frustrated uh, if you need to fight uh, why is my product or service better? Are my uh, subscri subscription fees um, valid for what I provide? Because at the end of the day, uh, there will maybe be someone who is providing same service, same product for uh, less fees of subscriptions. It's a good uh, idea, but it depends what product and services you are providing. And at the end of the day, it's also a good uh, business plan because you have data in and insights of your subscribers. So uh, have good and bad sides. It, at the end of the day, it depends on what are you providing. Yeah. Yeah. 
So thank you very much. I hope that we answered both of your questions. And guys, if you have any more questions, drop them in the Q&A. Uh, my panelists are really golden today. So uh, I think we've you know, touched upon a really interesting topics, guys. Yes, perfect. Thank you, Ariel. And thank you guys for, for answering those. Welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Um, that was, yeah, you go. Sorry. Yeah, I was really hoping to get like a lot more questions because when it comes to money, uh, a lot of people have a lot of questions, but maybe the, the, the attendees we have right here already have mm -hmm. everything covered. So yeah. that might be the case, yeah. but, which, which is actually a good thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Because you guys did really great. Thank you very much. But I guess we're going to send um, um, the recording and any questions that might be coming, um, we can, you know, get them as it goes in our in our support uh, support email. Um, so there I'm just going to see. Sorry, there is one more question, I think. One more question, yeah. For Nicola. Uh, let me see. What was the Canadian dollar and, and uh, dollar? And the Australian dollar currency removed from swap and yen. I usually use this feature before it was re removed. Unfortunately, I don't know the answer to this question. So I'm not gonna lie on air here. So, but we will, um, but the best thing to do is just drop your email in the chat here and we'll email you back just yeah. so we know that what was the specific reason for us removing that um but we do want to follow up so just drop your email it can be in a form of a question that's fine so we can follow up on the answer to that for the nigerians yeah yeah i think i understand what you mean but i will uh, i'm not sure what the thought process was behind removing the, those currencies from there so just drop your email in the chat and uh, we'll answer that question as as soon as i get the answers for it yeah thank you and okay, i got your email anyone else yeah Someone raised a hand, but I'm expecting mm. to see the question. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they can use the microphone for it. Yeah, Deli, um, I don't think you can use the microphone to talk to us, but perhaps you can drop your question in the Q&A section yeah. and we can go from there. Nope, I think it stopped. Respond to my email. Uh, okay, but I think this question? is a support question. Might be a support question. Is this a support question, maybe? Yeah. Mm. Can you where can you see the question? Sorry. The students, the, there's a difference between the between the chat and the Q and A, uh, at least for uh, right. for Zoom. So, on the lower portion of the Zoom, guys, uh, like six o'clock, uh, you can see like all of your options there. You can see the Q and A in the chat here. So, if you have any specific questions, please ask. Because it's 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 we're talking about money here. This is important. I'm just gonna drop our support email here in the chat as well for any support questions that you might have. You could drop my lovely colleagues a line there, and they'll be they'll be with you. Cool. Well, okay. if no more questions, guys, I think we can wrap it up and then. Uh, if any questions would arise for you, Igor, we'll make sure they get to you as well. But thank you very much for being here with us. And Nicola, thank you very much for being uh, on this webinar um, as well. Again, guys, our attendees, if it weren't for you, of course, we wouldn't even be doing this webinar. So, you know, thanks very much for, for being live and those that registered will get the uh, video as well. Um, I hope we managed to make a really interesting discussion, at least for me, it was really interesting. So thank you guys really for sharing your experience and your thoughts on this topic. Um, and have a great weekend, I guess. It's Friday, so let's try not to spend all of our savings this weekend and make something out of this webinar. But otherwise, thank you very much and catch you on the next one in two weeks. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.